Um, thank you for everyone for coming. Um, my name is Jackie Malecki, and I am a recruiter at UPMC. Um, I've been a recruiter for almost five years, um, specializing in IT positions. So, uh, because of the, the industry that I recruit for and the type of people that I look for, um, I've gotten into using um, social media to try to reach out to these people because um, you know, people that are into technology and into IT, right, these are true. some of the, the um, people who are using um, you know, these different websites and things like that um, on a regular basis, so might as well uh, try to reach them where I can. Good morning. Hi. Sorry, I started to come away to serve like Oh, that's okay. Sorry. Uh, to reintroduce myself to, to the couple people who just walked in, um, my name is Jackie, and I'm a recruiter at UPMC and a recruit for IT positions. And um, one thing that, um, you know, at, at my employer, at UPMC, one thing that we've been getting into is using social um, social networking tools, social media to reach out to candidates because, you know, with the economy right now, um, it's free, and that's one of the main things that, that we look at, not having to spend money on, it, you know, advertising and things like that. So, um, what I want to talk to you about today is, um, first off, some of the reasons why employers are using social media to reach out to candidates, and then also why you should do it, and um, just some different, um, different websites and methods that you can use, and if anyone else at the end would like to share any experiences that they would have, um, maybe there's, I, I know that there definitely are things out there that I didn't touch on, so if anyone else has any examples, please feel free to, to volunteer and share with someone else. So, um, you're looking for a job. You may be unemployed, you may just be looking for a career change. Um, this is a graphic that I pulled that gives some statistics on the source of hiring. Um, so from an employer perspective, um, if you look at it, so uh, you know, traditional job boards, Monster, Career Builder, Yahoo Hot Jobs, um, last year that only accounted for 12.3% of hires. Um, you know, it's something that is expensive. It's expensive for employers to do to post ads on that web on websites like that. And um, to be frank, a lot of candidates aren't even putting their resumes out there anymore. Um, a couple years ago, I could go and search on Monster for a business analyst, and there would be hundreds of people that come up in Pittsburgh. Now if I do a search, that number is going to be significantly less. I think a lot of people just don't want to put themselves out there anymore. Um, they may be looking passively and you know, just not really using that method anymore. Um, even other things like, uh, like career fairs. Um, only 3% of hiring, and I know job fairs are always, you know, a huge amount of people attend, but do you really get a lot out of it? Is it really um, a high percentage of, of a chance that you're going to get hired from going to a job fair? Come on in, sorry. That's all right, go ahead. Um, so if you look at it, the number one source of hires is referrals. So that could be either word of mouth referrals, employee referrals. Um, I almost consider some of the you know, social networking tools as referrals because you know I may be talking to someone who may not be looking for a job or may not work in the industry that I am looking for someone in, but they may have a brother, or a cousin, and a friend who they may be able to refer over to me. So I just thought this was interesting to see, um, even like third party agencies, um, companies aren't using staffing firms as much as they used to to cut down on costs. So um, you know, kind of getting getting yourself out there, um, using referrals, trying to get in touch with employers a different way than you normally would, is really going to help you out in your job search. And why do employers use social media to begin with? Um, like I was saying before, everyone is using these websites and these, um, these tools on a daily basis, so why not target them where they spend the most time? I'm sure everyone's on Facebook, you know, throughout the day at some point. A lot of people are on Twitter throughout the day, um, so why not try to reach out to them? Um, this is another survey that was done of, um, of recruiters on um, does your company, does you or your company uh, want to use social networking and social media to support recruitment efforts? 68% um, said yes, 13% um, plan to start, um, start using it this year, and um, only 17% said no. So um, you can see there that a lot of companies are either using it now or plan to use it soon. It's kind of the next wave of, um, you know, of recruitment and, and where recruitment is going in the future. 
um, some of the reasons for using social media um, is uh, because they can reach past job seekers. So like the people who, out, who post their resumes on Monster, um, those are considered active job seekers because you're out there, you're putting yourself out there to be found. Um, passive job seekers are categorized as people who um, you know, don't have their resumes out there. They're not broadcasting themselves saying, I need a job, I'm looking for a job. Um, but they're people that can be found other ways. Like you know, when a recruiter does cold calling and they try to find people, um, or if they found your resume maybe from like five years ago online somewhere, um, or it was like a word mouth referral, that's more what the passive job seeker is. 74% um, because of the lower cost. Like I said, all of these things are free. So you might as well take advantage of that rather than paying you know, maybe $200, $300 to post a job online, even more than that to post in a newspaper. Um, why do that when you can do something for free? Um, and then also people use it to find candidates with hard to find skills or experience. So you know, I can do a target job search for a really specific skill that I'm looking for and um, you know, try to do keyword searches in Twitter and find people that are talking about that technology and, uh, and it's a, another good way to, to find people that way. Um, you know, even if they're not actively looking, um, you know, I can still reach out to them and say, hey, I, you know, I saw your tweet about this, are you interested in the job? So what can you do um, to help your job search by using social media? There's a lot of text there, so I apologize. Um, the first thing is to act professional. So I know that a lot of people use, um, you know, like their Twitter account, their Facebook account, everything like that for personal reasons. But if you're going to have, you know, a, a personal account, um, you may want to set up a professional account as well if you're doing a job search. That also comes into play if you don't want your current employer to know that you're looking for a job. Um, if you're connected to a bunch of your coworkers on Twitter and on Facebook, you don't really want to go around saying, hey, I'm looking for a job, who's going to help me find a job? Um, so you, it might be a good idea to set up um, you know, maybe a different Twitter account that is really going to help you in your job search so that you don't you know, cross that line and get in trouble at work or get fired or something like that. Um, also be aware of what you say because you never know who will be reading it. Um, the, the case of the Cisco fatty, does anyone know, anyone know about that, a couple people? Mm -hmm. So what happened there, um, there was a guy, I think it was a guy, who had interviewed and got a job offer at uh, the company Cisco. He went home that day and tweeted, Cisco offered, just offered me a job, now I have to weigh the utility of a fatty, a fatty paycheck against the daily commute to San Jose and hating the work. Well, someone from Cisco saw that on Twitter and responded back and said, who is the hiring manager? I'm sure they would love to know that you will hate the work. We here at Cisco are very well versed in the web. And basically, I think they rescinded the job offer, so the guy kind of shot himself in the foot and uh, shouldn't have done that. Um, another thing that I do too as a recruiter at UPMC, I have this Twitter search and um, you know, a different um, other feeds from websites that search UPMC. So if, something, if someone says something about UPMC on Twitter, I can see it. So if you interview with us and you say something, you know, that you interviewed, you, you know, you hated the work and you hated the recruiter and, you know, it was so horrible, I can see that and we can see that. So that may, you know, that may hurt you as well because you never know who's going to be reading it. Um, and even like I said before, if you're doing a job search, um, just kind of watch what you say because if your current employer is following you and you don't know it or something like that, um, just kind of, you know, be careful on your side that you don't um, that you don't hurt yourself and your chances of getting a new job or staying at your current job. Um, one of the other things is to be open to talking with the recruiter. I know a lot of people, especially in the IT field, they hate recruiters. But not every recruiter is the third party, you know, vulture um, type of recruiter that's going to hound you and keep bothering you. And I know I've worked with you before in the past, Kevin. And, um, and not everyone's like that, um, you know, especially, <laughs> especially um, you know, on the corporate end of it, um, corporate recruiters, I mean, they're, they're trying to help, um, you know, the company and, and help the candidate as well and find the best match. So it's going to be a little bit different working with a corporate recruiter than a third party recruiter, um, but just be open to it. Not every recruiter is bad. So um, some things that employers don't like to see. 
And I know that there is a big debate on whether employers can use social media um, to to look up candidates and kind of do almost like a you know a background check on someone before they're hired. And, and there's a really big debate over that whether it's ethical, whether it's not ethical. Um, you know, personally, I don't do that. Um, I know some other companies might, but still, you know, you want to present yourself in the best manner. Um, so posting provocative or inappropriate photographs or information, we don't want to see that. I don't want to see your pictures from, you know, your drunk weekend with your friends, you know, stuff like that. I don't really want to see that. Um, and then content about drinking or drug use. I mean, you know, everyone, you know, can have a drink now and then and stuff like that. But, um, you know, just kind of watch what you say and kind of make it, you know, make it professional. So um, the picture of the ball and the Yes, probably, probably not a good idea. <laughs> Um, bad mouthing of your previous employer, coworkers, or client. Um, you know, a lot of people use Twitter and Facebook to vent about their job or their boss. Um, that might not look so good because if I, you know, if I find your profile somewhere and it says, "Oh, I hate my job. I hate my boss. He doesn't know what he's doing. I hate working here." Um, maybe if I hired you, you would say that about us. So you just kind of have to watch um, poor communication skills. That's another thing. Um, I know that everyone, especially you know, online with Twitter with 140 characters, you have to try to squish everything into that small amount of space um, and be as um, you know short as possible. But if you're using too much, you know, internet shorthand and abbreviations and things like that, um, I might think that you don't know how to write a professional email because there are people who um, you know maybe don't have the writing communication skills to write um, you know appropriate professional emails in a business setting. Um, so, you know, I mean, I'm not saying you have to use proper grammar and, and language in every single, you know, thing that you write online, but, um, you know, just kind of keep that in the back of your mind whenever you're writing something. Um, discriminatory, uh, discriminatory comments. Um, you know, again, kind of keep that to yourself. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but if it's something that may be uh, discriminatory against, um, you know, another race, gender, um, you know, something like that, um, you know, probably keep that to yourself and don't broadcast that for everyone else to see. Um, lying about qualifications. People do it, and, um, you know, it, I guess it would be kind of hard to tell, I mean, unless you say, you know, something out there, maybe on your Facebook profile, it didn't say, you know, it, it had your real background and your schooling, but then on your resume it said that you had an MBA, but you really didn't, you know, something like that can be easily caught. Um, and then sharing confidential information about your previous employer. Um, this is a big thing because you know it's always good to maybe you know bring a portfolio with you to an interview, depending on what the job is. But it might also be a good idea to you know kind of black that stuff out, anything that's confidential, because again, it, it kind of sticks in the employer's mind that you know if you did this at uh, you know for your your previous job, what if you left our company and went to another company and you shared our confidential information. Um, you know, we don't want that getting out and it's kind of uh, you know unprofessional if you share confidential information when you know that it's confidential. So um, starting with Twitter, some of the, the different things that you can do as a job seeker, um, one of the number one things I think is putting a link to either an online resume or your LinkedIn account um, in your bio. So you do have room to put um, put a website in there, or even if you have a blog, you can put that too. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, that's helpful. If I'm looking for, for a candidate for something and I see your profile come up, that way I can click on it and, um, and go directly to your online uh, resume or your LinkedIn account and learn about your background. Um, a lot of companies are creating accounts specifically for recruiting. Um, I manage the UPMC Careers Twitter account. Um, for example, and what we do there is I talk about um, different news articles that come up with UPMC um, involved in them or other, um, you know, healthcare news that might be interesting to people as well as tweeting about jobs. And I actually have a link in the tweet um, to the job so you can actually click on it and directly go to our website and apply. A lot of companies are doing that. Not everyone is there yet. Um, but you can actually, if you do some searching on Google, you can find uh, um, find some lists of top employers on Twitter that are using for recruitment. And um, I know that UPMC has appeared on some of those. If anyone needs any specific ones, I can probably look them up and send them to you. Um, but I've seen lists before where there's maybe um, 50 to 100 companies that are listed um, 
on those lists that are recruiting on Twitter. So you can actually just go and click on them and follow them, and um, there you go, start learning about different jobs that are available. And, um, and interact, feel free to ask questions. Um, if someone asks me a question about a job opening or are there any types of these jobs available, I'll answer them because they took the time to reach out to me. So I know a lot of other um, employers are probably doing that same thing. We want the interaction, we want the back and forth, and um, we want to, you know, to talk to our candidates. Um, there's also some job search engines that were specifically created for Twitter to pull tweets um, on uh, job postings. So some of them are um, twitterjobsearch.com, twitterjobfinder.com, and tweetmyjobs.com. So you can actually go to these websites and do searches within those websites and their search engines. What were they again? Um, it's twitterjobsearch.com, the first one, twitterjobfinder.com, and tweetmyjobs.com. So you can do searches in there that will pull the um, all of the job listings that are on Twitter. It kind of depends on how they're formatted and how the um, you know how they maybe tag it or whatever. But you can still search on those and uh, and try to, to pull up jobs that <coughs> can probably uh, near it by location, um, keyword, industry, that type of thing. Some other things that you can do are keyword searches. So if you go to search.twitter.com, um, you can do searches on there too. Um, for instance, uh, just a couple that um, that I did as a you know kind of an example that actually did pull a lot of stuff up are um, the hashtag symbol jobs in Pittsburgh um, and then hiring Pittsburgh. So you can kind of play around with it and see um, you know what works best for you. If there's a certain keyword, if you're looking for accounting positions, you can maybe put accountant Pittsburgh. Um, something along those lines, but that will pull up um, results in the um, in the search engine from the past seven days. You can also follow other Twitter users that are out there to help job seekers. Um, there's one called Job Angels. They have a website, they have a LinkedIn group, they have a Facebook group. Um, they started probably earlier this year, and their um, motto is to help. They want everyone to help one person find a job. No matter how that is, um, you know, if it's someone that you know, if it's some referral or some way that you can help one other person find a job, that's their goal. So you can actually direct message or use their hashtag symbol um, in your tweet saying that you're looking for a job, you know, what your field of interest is and what your location is, and they'll actually take that and retweet it out to their followers, and they have about 11,000 followers. So um, they do that all the time, and I always, you know, I always hear about people responding back to that and saying, "Okay, well, I, you know, I know someone who's looking for something like this. Maybe I can help you." Um, so. And I think that the further side on Twitter is um, a hashtag follow Friday. Just mm -hmm. to recommend Monday, and then you actually recommend somebody for their job on Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So other things like that too, like you mentioned, follow Friday and um, recommend Monday. So. Um, you, know, you can use Twitter in many different ways to, um, you know, to, to recommend other people for jobs and try to help other people. Maybe if you're not looking yourself, you can try to help someone else in a manner like this. You can also look for um, local tweet ups where you can network with other people. So, um, you know, like I said before, it, it doesn't matter if you're, um, you know, if you're not interacting with someone who is directly in the field that you're looking to work in. You never know who's going to know someone else, who's going to know someone else who may be able to help you. So, kind of getting your name out there and just talking with other people who um, might be able to help you in one way or another is um, is always beneficial to yourself. Um, LinkedIn is another great way to network with people and help your job search. Um, make sure your profile is complete and detailed. It actually will give you a status bar at the top that will tell you what percentage of your profile is complete. Like if you add a picture, that gives you 5%. If you add um, you know, something else, that gives you 5%. Um, so just be as detailed as possible. Um, make it your, you know, your mini online resume. Um, you might want to not get as detailed as you would, you know, maybe a two-page resume, um, but put as much information out there because that may help other people who see your profile um, recommend you for jobs. And um, don't be afraid to request to connect to a recruiter. I said before, recruiters aren't all bad. We're not scary. Um, if you're really interested in working somewhere, see if you can find a recruiter or someone in HR for that company and connect to them. 
and maybe ask them, hey, you know, I've applied to some of your jobs, I'm not getting any traction, is there anything that you can recommend that I do? Anything, um, you know, am I not formatting my resume right? Am I not, you know, applying for the right jobs? Can you help me? It always can't hurt to ask for help. Um, look at the group section. Um, you can join up to 50 groups. I just learned that the other day because I was at 45 and it gave me a, um, yeah, <laughs> it said you can only join five more. Um, so you can join up to 50 groups. So you can look, you can do keyword searches, you can look on location. Um, join groups that specialize in your industry or the job that you're focusing on um, or other things for job seekers in your area to network with people. Um, a lot of these groups may have recruiters in them that will post jobs on a regular basis. Um, so you can learn about them that way or just talk to other people, see what they're doing, see what they can do, um, you know, to maybe give you some tips or information um, for help. Um, the main feature of LinkedIn is to connect to people. Connect with your former colleagues, classmates, um, even people you work with right now, because it's all about who you know. Um, you know, the, the main reason for... Sorry. <laughs> I just got somebody asked to adjust the camera. Okay. So sorry. Thank you. Um, it's all about who you know. I mean, people say sometimes, you know, oh, I can't get into that company. I need to know someone there. So, you know, look at your connections. Look at who they're connected to. Because if you're, you know, if, if I'm connected to Greg and he's connected to, um, you know, Russell behind him, but I'm not connected to Russell, I can do an introduction through Greg and get in touch with him. So, you know, you have your degree of connections, your first, second, and third connections. Use those and kind of look for people that um, you may be able to reach out to and, and ask for more information. You can also request recommendations. Um, so it's almost like a, um, you know, people have their list of, um, of references to check. This is the, kind of the same thing. Ask them to write a recommendation for you on your LinkedIn page. Then if anyone goes to your page, they will see your recommendations there. And they can say, you know, so-and-so is a fantastic worker. They really know what they're doing. They're an expert in their field. And um, if a recruiter or someone in HR, in HR sees that, then that's going to be a bonus for you. Um, you can also use the companies function to do research on companies that you're interested in. Um, they started this probably maybe within the past six months or so, and I think it's really, really interesting. Um, you can search a company name, and for most larger companies it will come up. It will give you um, statistics, how many em employees are at the company, where they're located, if they have any um, like uh, partner companies. It will also give you demographics, <coughs> but the demographics are only based on the LinkedIn um, members. So it will say like, you know, 40% male, 60% female, but that's only based upon the LinkedIn users. It's not um, representative of the, of the company as a whole. Um, and it will also give you the names uh, of top LinkedIn users from that company. So um, it will give you the name of the top LinkedIn users, um, new hires of the company, former employees, and I think people who've been recently promoted. Um, so right there is a great way to, to use that to um, possibly get in touch with other people. Um, at that company that you're targeting. And uh, it just is a really good way to do research on a company as well. Um, you know, I always recommend going to a website and maybe looking at articles and doing your research about a company before you go to interview, especially when they ask you, you know, oh, what do you know about our company? And you sit there and say nothing. Um, you know, do your research beforehand. Um, Facebook is another way to, um, another thing to use in your job search. Facebook is, it's kind of weird because it's almost like a gray area between, you know, how do you use it for personal stuff? How do you kind of use that for something professional? Um, I, I would say not a ton of companies are using Twitter, or I'm sorry, Facebook for recruitment because of that purpose, you know, where to draw the line between personal and business. But there are um, still a lot of companies that, that are on there. I think Ernst & Young was maybe the first company that started recruiting on Facebook and it's completely blown up and they've done fantastic, um, especially with their internship programs and things like that. They have a, you know, a huge following of people on their Facebook page. Um, you can join groups for job seekers um, on there as well. I know that there is one, um, BirdWorks has a group on Facebook. Um, you can get into that group and they will you know, give you information about maybe upcoming career fairs, you can just interact with other people and um, you know learn about job opportunities and kind of give each other um, you know tips and other information. What was and then the ask. Group called? I'm sorry. What was the group called? Um, Bird Works. Bird. Yeah, like Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. Works. I think it's all one word. 
And, um, and then ask your friends for help too. Again, kind of the thing, if, you know, if you're connected to every single person you work with on Facebook and you, know, you don't want to go out there and broadcast, hey, I'm looking for a new job, especially if your boss is a friend of yours on Facebook. But um, you know, if you kind of keep that part separate, um, you know, ask your friends for help. Maybe they might know someone, maybe they work at that company, and, uh, and they'll be able to help you out and give you some information. Um, video resumes are another tool. Um, this isn't a, I don't think it's a widely used um, you know, way of, of looking for a job, but people do it. Um, I searched on YouTube and there are quite a few video resumes out there. Um, there's also a website called ResumeTube, um, which is specific to you know, job seekers that are, are making resumes that they're posting online. Um, I would say it's probably most beneficial if you're seeking a job in like a creative type of industry or maybe tech industry. Um, otherwise, I don't really know if the companies would really be interested in that. Go ahead. MBA programs, one. Okay. If you are applying for MBA programs, especially at Ivy League University, yeah. then it'll ask you to become media resume. Okay, yeah, that's a good example too. Um, so, you know, it may not work for everyone. You know, if you're looking for a, you know, I can't even think of something. What was this example? I didn't hear it. Um, if you're applying for an MBA program, um, some of them, do they ask for a video resume or do they? A lot of them ask for video resume, right? Okay. When, uh, if you go through the first process, mm -hmm. the like application that will ask you to submit video resume. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's another example that I didn't know about. Yes. Um, another thing that you can do too is search for videos that are created by employers to learn about their job openings, their benefits, and their culture. Um, I was at a, a conference recently and they were showing some examples. Um, I wish I could think of some of the companies that were doing it. Um, but you know, even like big companies in here like Microsoft and things like that probably have um, either on their website or maybe on YouTube um, videos that, um, that talk about you know, what it's like to work at that company. Good example is Bridge Worldwide, that's one of the largest marketing companies in Ohio, mm -hmm. and they allow their employees to create video channels and to be kind of marketers, marketers for the company. Yeah, and, and a lot of companies are doing that too. I've heard other companies having contests um, within the company. They'll you know break people into groups and hand out video cameras and say, make a video about a, a day in the life of working here. Um, to use the, on their website or you know on YouTube to to promote working at their company and to tell people you know what it's like to spend a day working there. Um, Visual CV is a website where you can create a web-based resume without having your own website. So rather than going and you know and creating your website if you're not really web savvy, um, do it on that website on Visual CV. Um, you can put together your resume. You can actually add things to it to enhance the experience. So audio, video, images. So it's kind of like your online portfolio. Just put everything into one. Um, you can send it as a link to, um, to an employer. You know, put it in the signature of your email. Um, put it in your LinkedIn profile. Um, something like that. And it's just more information that you, can, that you can give to an employer and show them, hey, I stand out. Um, you know, I've done this, I've done this, and you know, here it is right here. You can see it before I even come in to interview. Um, you can control your privacy settings, so you can have it so that, you know, maybe you're not searchable and only people that you, you know, send a link to can see it. And a lot of companies are um, creating their own profiles on there as well. The same thing, like, you know, what it's like to work there, um, what type of job openings they have, what type of person they're really seeking, and um, they post jobs on there too. Um, I know I was just checking it out recently, and I think I might see if you know I can create a profile for my company um, because it seems like it's you know it, it does seem a little underutilized um, in the market, but you know it's uh, another tool that you can use to make yourself stand out and make yourself different from everyone else. Um, mobile technology is another thing that's um, you know really going to start helping people in the future with their job search. Um, you know, there's really not going to be a point of business cards anymore because you can exchange um, content information through your mobile phone. Um, I know the first, I think uh, I was following the tweets um, from the meetup on Friday night and people were talking about bumping with their iPhones. Um, you can do that and um, easily, you know, exchange your content information with someone else. Um, there are um, some other apps too. I know um, Dub Contact Card is one for BlackBerry. 
Um, if you and someone else have that, um, you can, I think it locates each other and you can switch contact information that way. Um, another one that I found out actually from Pittsburgh Jen, she talked about it the other day online, that's her cousin back there, um, is context. Um, and I was trying it out myself, I was playing around with it. Um, you can actually set up your um, contact information in a business card online. You can log into this website, um, create a username, put your contact information in there. So if anyone, if you can try it right now if you want, you can text Jay Malecki to 50500 and you'll get a text back that has my contact information in it. So if I'm, you know, if I'm at a networking event or um, some event like that, I don't have my business cards to say, hey, you know, text, text this and it'll come to your phone and then you can contact me when you get back in the office on Monday. So uh, I think that's really cool. I think that would really help people. But, um, you know, really what's the point of business cards anymore? They just pile up on your desk and you end up throwing them away at one point anyways or shove them in a Rolodex. Um, so keep everything, you know, keep it online, use, you know, use your phone and, um, that's just another way to, um, to do that. A lot of companies, too, um, I think in the future are moving toward um, creating apps for people to do job searches online. Um, I don't know how many companies are doing it now. I was trying, I don't have an iPhone, so I can't search the app store. But um, I know that people have talked about it before creating something, you know, um, if you're a large company creating apps, so you can go on there and search all of their jobs and apply, you know, by just a click of your button on your phone. Um, there are other job search engines um, that do have apps. I think maybe like Yahoo Hot Jobs has one, like Career Builder. Um, yes, yeah, so you can look. You know, you can go on those ones on your phone too and apply for jobs. You know, when you're not even at your computer. Did anyone try it? Did it work? I'm still waiting for the text message. It takes a couple minutes. Yeah, me too. Quite a while. Um, a Another uh, thing that you can do too is writing a blog. I know some people went to some of the sessions yesterday about creating a blog and what to write about. Um, are you an expert at what you do? If you're not, you know, don't say that you are and don't pretend like you are. But um, if you're really, really interested in what you do, start a blog that talks about it. If you're really into programming, you know, start a blog that talks about programming and you know different tips and information and sharing your information with other people. Um, you know, if you like to write start a blog and talk about writing. Um, so if you create a blog, um, create something that you can be found in web searches where you can talk about your career specialty and put your contact information on there. A lot of companies and recruiters use Google searching as a way to find candidates. Um, so you know that's a good way to be found in those searches. Um, even if your resume is not up there, um, you know, if we find someone who's talking about, you know, what their specialty is and we're looking for someone who has that exact background and you're writing all this stuff and it looks like you know what you're talking about, um, you know, that's just going to give you more credibility in, um, in the eye of an employer. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and, uh, you know, just another thing to, you know, and, and it's always helpful to always be learning too. So something like this can... Uh, kind of keep you on track and keep you always learning things and keeping up with you know new things that are coming out, new technology, new um, uh, new things just to kind of keep yourself going. So um, and then I have all my contact information here. So basically, you can find me anywhere and feel free to you know to email me if you have questions. Uh, find me on LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, I know I ran quite a bit early, but um, I want to see if you guys have questions. If you have questions, if you have stories that you want to tell um, about your experience to help other people. No one? So, <laughs> oh, go ahead. I was just curious, how, like, roughly what percentage do you find you recruit people this way versus traditional postings that you will? Um, you know, it, it kind of depends on the position. Okay. Um, I, I recruit for IT positions, so if I have an IT position, I usually will tweet it out to my network, and um, you know sometimes I get people writing back and say, "Hey, I'm interested," or, or "Hey, this other person might be might be interested." Um, it's really hard to track if we've hired anyone from those methods. Um, I know that, um, for instance, on the EPMC online application, we excuse me, we have a place where you can put the source of um, where you came from. So I have seen a couple of people that actually put Twitter as their source, and I get really excited. I'm like, oh, yeah, someone saw our, our job posting on Twitter. 
Um, but there are probably a ton of other people who may have seen the link on Twitter, but just don't put that down. You know, they might put our website or whatever. So it's, uh, I don't even know how, you know, how there's a way to track something like that. But um, I'll kind of use everything. Um, I'll use, um, you know, a little bit of everything. I might do some sourcing on Monster. I might do some Google searching. I might look on Twitter. Um, so it's like a combination of everything. And another thing I wanted to mention too, I think I had updated my presentation and didn't put it on here. Um, don't limit yourself to just one source. I mean, don't just, you know, don't use Twitter for all of your job searching because you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, what would be more helpful is using a combination of things. Obviously, you're going to have to apply online for a lot of jobs um, directly on their website. So doing that, um, you know, apply online to their job. But maybe look at some of these other resources and see if there's anything else that you can do to um, get some extra information or to put yourself above someone else or show extra interest in it. Um, you know, if someone um, applies to, to our jobs, you know, I might just see their resume passing. You know, maybe they're a fit, maybe they're not. If someone reaches out to me on Twitter and says, hey, I applied to this job, what can you, you know, what information can you give me? I'm going to remember who they are because they took that extra time to reach out to me and ask for help or to ask for a status update. So I think it, um, you know, it's just kind of combining everything and using all of these different resources to, um, to aid in your job search and maybe you stand out, um, you know, among everyone else because, you know, with the job market right now, um, I know that unemployment is still very high. Um, people are still looking for, for jobs, um, you know, probably more than they were before. Um, for some of my jobs, I'm seeing upwards of 100 to 200 applicants to each job. So obviously not every single person, um, you know, is qualified for the job. And doing something extra um, will, you know, make you stand out and make you get noticed when, you know, maybe before you, you may not, you know, you may kind of slip through the cracks a little bit and just look like any other, you know, any other resume that comes through. So Jack, I'm curious, in terms of, um, you know, because I, I, like, I'm a big proponent of, of, you know, blogging, especially when I have something to say, but one of the things I'm interested to hear from a recruiter is so people sometimes will express their opinion on political issues, mm -hmm. religious issues, you know, be critical of certain, you know, individuals or so on, maybe public figures, you know, so on and so forth. So how concerned or what should be the person's, you know, kind of considerations when doing that in terms of an employer mm -hmm. looking at that? Because it's not being critical of a past employer. Yeah. What is, you know, what do you think about that? I think that's a touchy subject too because, you know, and, you know, maybe I'm different. Maybe I don't, you know, if some of those things I don't care about as much. I mean, if you, you know, if you swear a little bit, you know, I don't really care. But someone else might be offended by that. If you have a very strong religious or political or, you know, critical eye of, of some particular person, that might be offensive to an employer. Um, so I, I think you just kind of have to, and again, it depends because a lot of times, Recruiters are seeking out people. Maybe if you're, and you might not be putting yourself out there to be found, um, because you know we do a lot of Google searching and things like that. Um, so I mean, if you're specifically if you're looking for a job, I would say be very careful on you know how you, how you kind of handle those issues because you could offend someone. Um, you know, sometimes that that might make someone not contact you. Um, you know, again, we're not. You know, it's kind of a thing you're not really supposed to judge people based upon, you know, what their online presence is, but you never know how they may feel about that. And I one of I mean one of my uh, one of, of my friends and co founders of, of Pittsburgh Waters has a, a very good adage that I think is, is useful in maybe being considered in this case is always think about every post that you make in terms of good morning future employer. Mm -hmm. So literally like the future employer is gonna look at that particular one, read it, and if that's the only thing they see is that something to consider? But for, I just was—I never heard from the recruiter standpoint mm -hmm. about that. Issue. Yeah, I think that's a—I think that's a really good point. Yeah. Because um, you never know, you know, like I said, you never know who's going to read it, who's going to find it. And if you won't say it to somebody's face, don't tweet it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I work at Duquesne University, which is a rather conservative organization, and um, when we were actually getting in resumes and getting in inquiries, when I was looking for a web designer. They would show me sites that they created. Well, when they created the site, the goth black heavy metal filled with curse words sort of thing, 
They're actually telling me to go to that site and check it out, which means I don't know if they'd be comfortable in the organization. So in some ways, you are who you are, and they're going to need to be happy with who you are, because that's going to be you on later. Mm -hmm. But, and, you know, so it doesn't hurt to really, you know, get the facts out. But, um, yeah, we do, you know, go <coughs> and, and then, the other thing about, you mentioned Facebook and having friends at work on your account. Well, you might be friends with this person, and they might be friends with this person, but I can go to her and say, she didn't get to work today. What did she do last night? And they're, you know, perfectly happy to come up with my Facebook, which is, I can't believe they're making me come into work today. And I just never do it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the other things too, like you know, if you're playing hooky from work and you say that on your Facebook page or on Twitter, and someone sees that, then uh, you know, you said that you were so sick and you can't come into work, but really you're going to like go see a movie or a concert or something. You know, I mean, watch what you say there. I mean, it used to be just gossip that one person would tell another to tell another one <coughs> on their calendar. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyone have any other? Yes. And so you're saying too that if you have an inherent movie, you forgot to mention something that you think would be pertinent, this would be a good opportunity to connect the show, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely do that too. For whatever reason, you may not have the manager's contact information, <coughs> but you, you, know, you may know someone um, that's on there. You can say, hey, you know, I, I forgot to tell the manager this, so I wanted to thank them. Um, then that can always be you know, forwarded or sent to, um, to the hiring manager or even. Um, you know, I know in my search on UPMC um, in Twitter, if someone says, oh, I just had a fantastic interview at UPMC, I'm so excited to work there, um, I'll uh, send them a quick message and say, oh, hey, you know, what area did you interview in? You know, I hope it went well, good luck. Um, you know, I'll try to kind of give them that encouragement and, and let them know that, hey, you know, we want you to work here. I have no idea how your interview actually went. I don't know what you know what area it's in. Um, if someone says, "Oh, I just started my new job at UPMC today," um, I'll reply back and then say, you know, "Hey, congratulations! I hope you have a great career here. Let me know if there's anything I can do." Um, so, so yeah. I mean, if you put positive things, you know, then uh, I think that's good. But if you're, you know, completely slamming the company you just interviewed for, uh, they might see that, and it might not kind of, you know go over too well if you interview there in the future and they, you know, they know that you weren't too happy. So likewise when you're saying you don't sign your company, it may actually move us to be good things that happen at work currently in case down the line we're looking for a job and then people say, oh, they actually feel possibly about it. Exactly. Exactly. Good feedback is always good. Bad feedback is rarely good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> LinkedIn has been around for a number of years. It's certainly not new. Um, is it still seen as a vital uh, resource platform? Is it still working the way it was originally intended? Um, I think so. I think I, I wish I was trying to look up the membership numbers. Um, I know that LinkedIn is growing and keeps growing and keeps growing. There's new people joining it all the time, and they're adding new features. They're you know, they had added the groups feature and they added the companies feature. They have their question and answer section. Um, so I think it can be used for many purposes. It can be used for people seeking jobs, um, for you know, just people looking to connect and stay in touch with people. So I, I think that um, you know the purpose is still there. However, I've noticed, and I, I brought this up on Twitter recently, and was kind of discussing it with some people. Um, they now have a space where you can put your picture on there, and I said I don't want to put my picture on there because this is a you know. Professional side, I mean, you know, I, I equate that to putting a picture on a resume, which, you know, I, someone was saying that in Europe people do that a lot, but in the United States it's kind of frowned upon. So, you know, why do I need to put my picture out there? What does it matter what I look like? You can also now put your birth date, your marital status, um, some other stuff like that. And so why, you know, maybe I don't understand what the purpose of that is on a professional LinkedIn profile because. You don't really, you know, you don't put that on your resume. So why put it on LinkedIn? I don't know if that's competitive pressure where they feel like, you know, that because I, I agree. I see, mm -hmm. I see Facebook in, in, in my view. I see Facebook is is more of a personal, mm -hmm. you know, personal venue for you know networking with people. I mean, it, some people use it for business, but for me, it's personal. LinkedIn is squarely business. Mm -hmm. And I agree. I don't. I don't understand why. Yeah, they're starting to kind of mesh the two. I don't know yeah, if they think that people are going to start moving to Facebook for their business. You know, mm -hmm. for their business context. Which I, I, I don't. I don't see that. But 
Well, I think LinkedIn felt that they were the Facebook of the business world four or five years ago when they got started, and they were about networking business people, organizational people together, and the job searching, if you will, is just one of the manifestations of being in a community, a networked community. So I think that has not been forsaken, and so putting a picture and other personal information would be part of this community spirit. It may not apply so well to recruiting or even be appropriate. So I think LinkedIn sees themselves with multiple purposes, but I was just really wondering, is it still vital? And does it still really have the energy and is seen as relevant? Mm -hmm. And I think you're saying yes. Yeah. The, the photo is a double-edged sword. I mean, I can see that being a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah. The bad thing is that you know somebody obviously can make a judgment about you right. by your appearance. But the good thing is, is that if a recruiter is trying to remember who you are, that's yeah. another yeah. thing to yeah. remember. Like, oh, I remember that. Okay, you know. I mean, it's just another way for for them to remember. So it could go either way, right? Mm -hmm. But it, I think it's like one of those things on the uh, Pittsburgh Business Times, you know, on the page where they're showing the promotions and whatever. I do think that the picture does. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can present yourself professionally, regardless of who you are or what you are, I think that's what people want to see. They want to, you know, I don't think people should be putting up pictures of, uh, you know, them at the beach or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. People yeah. are doing that. So but that's, that's another the, thing. When I when I had brought it up on Twitter, someone responded back and said, I wish I remember who it was, um, and said, you know, maybe it's okay if you're in a position where you have a professional picture taken, you know, in front of a fancy background wearing a suit. You know that might be okay to put on LinkedIn, but yeah, like when you're at the beach wearing a bathing suit, I don't think that's yeah. appropriate to put on LinkedIn. That's yeah. just me. And, and we, I'm, I'm, I work in in, uh, in career services as well, and, I, and we do promote LinkedIn as way. Well. And we've been finding more and more companies are only posting jobs on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Like they're using that as an exclusive uh, job posting. Mm -hmm. And then that's another thing too. With LinkedIn, they do post jobs on there. Um, they're you know fairly. Right, so they're about two hundred dollars for a thirty-day posting. So um, you know, not a lot of people are doing that. But another way to get jobs out on LinkedIn is to create a group where you can do jobs. Um, I have a UPMC career, uh, IT careers group that I set up where um, I invite potential candidates and even current employees to join this group. I'll post all of my jobs that I have available. I'll post new like technology news about the company, um, even as other tips, you know, on like resume things and like you know the IT profession what jobs are hot um, so like that I can do that for free I can post those jobs for free yeah they're not going to go out to everyone but they go out to the small group of people who I know are going to be interested in it so you know and I also if I meet a candidate somewhere or meet someone at a, at a networking event or a career fair I'll, I'll look them up later and send them a LinkedIn invitation because then that way I know you know, because people lose track of emails, and, you know, people lose touch with people, it's a good way to keep them kind of in the back of my mind. If I'm on LinkedIn, I can see their, you know, their status updates and their connection updates. So I can go back later and say, okay, well, I remember I met this person here. I'm going to send them a quick message just to say hi. Um, you know, it's just kind of another way to keep in touch with people and, you know, kind of like your online Rolodex, basically. Absolutely, yeah. Oh. Um, I just had a personal experience that I kind of wanted to share really quick that will hopefully kind of sell everybody on everything James has been talking about here. Um, and that was a, a week and a half ago. Um, I was actually laid off from my company. I'm a programmer for a company in Baltimore called Omni TI. Um, I'm from Pittsburgh, but I worked from home. Anyway, uh, I was laid off, and I was like, oh gosh, this is the worst thing ever. I'm depressed. I'm sad. This is horrible. Um, one of my friends on Twitter caught wind of that. And uh, I happen to be uh, networked with a lot of the um, the programming elite as far as uh, the PHP programming language is concerned, which is what I do. Um, and uh, one of them caught wind of that and said, hey, this guy, Nick, is a really great programmer. He needs a job soon. And uh, from there, it just kind of snowballed. And like 30 people ended up retweeting it. And it was just all over the place. Uh, one of them said, you know, let's figure out how many people we've reached, and they estimated it was like 15,000 people saw this you know, uh, tweet saying, hire Nick because he's a great programmer. And so at, at first I was just like really touched, like wow, you know, all these people care about me, that's fantastic. Um, but what really shocked me is almost immediately, like starting that day, I started getting offers and requests for my resume uh, from all over the place. Uh, you know, people were requesting it on Twitter, people were requesting it through Facebook. Um, several people emailed me. I don't even know how these people were finding me, but 
everybody seemed to uh, suddenly know how to get in contact with me and wanted to uh, find out more about you know what I was looking for. And um, now I'm at the point where really I'm just kind of figuring out what job I want, and this is a week and a half later. Um, it's just totally amazing how quickly those things work, and it was really, I think, a positive experience that shows exactly how important this stuff Jackie's is talking about is. So. Uh, what a setup. Yeah. <laughs> 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 My exchange later. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's a fantastic yeah. example of how it works. If you do it the right way, and I'm sure that your intention wasn't even, you know, to, to make it that big and widespread, but you said one thing, and, you know, one person decided to help you out and look where it got you now, and I'm sure that you're going to get a job from that. I have a question, though. How did you back up your stuff? Like, where are you? Like, okay, Nick needs a job. Where am I going to find information about Nick? Well, I have a, a personal blog. Unfortunately, I don't update it very often, like ah, since February, but it's there. Um, but it, and it says nice things, so presumably people see it and they think positively of me. Hopefully, um, I you know I I've always been very careful to keep my Facebook page looking very professional and very clean. Um, I know that it's not for professional reasons, but I still you know people can find me there, so why not present the best me on Facebook? Um, and as far as Twitter goes, uh, I've always been active in Twitter talking about programming related things. And so if people search for Slango on Twitter, then they'll see, you know, that I, you know, that's what I'm interested in. And, uh, you know, I'm talking to the right people. I'm doing the right things. And uh, I didn't put a ton of effort into it. I, I haven't even, I don't have a LinkedIn page, unfortunately. See, but that's the one that I was wondering. Like, how would anybody see your professional, like, how would anybody see your resume? That's, that's, unfortunately, I wasn't exactly prepared for that. I've since uh, signed up for LinkedIn, but I wasn't ready for, uh, you know, the whole job search thing. So, didn't have a LinkedIn account ready to go. But somebody tweaks uh, at Slango, needs a job. Another person clicks on the at Slango in Twitter and gets his profile page from Twitter, which has his link to his website, his blog on there, so they click on his blog and they get this information about him and other contact information. Right. Snowballs from there. Three clicks and you're there. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's a perfect example of everything that I just mentioned. <laughs> yeah, having a blog, you know, keeping yourself professional online. Um, even if your, your photo albums on Facebook, some people don't put them as private for like friends only. So even if your profile is private, I, you know, people, other people can still somehow see your pictures, if, you know, if you show them to everyone and not just friends. So that's another thing that I've noticed that some people don't do. And uh, there was a session on that yesterday that uh, Missy Sword did. If you missed it, you can look online. It's probably on there by uh, the Bebo guys. <laughs> so does anyone else have anything? Uh, it was the. Uh, it was the, the 10 a.m. session yesterday. How to be found and not found. Yeah, how to, how to, I think how to find people oh, and to not, not be found. found. She, actually, she actually does that for her work because she's terrible. I'm, I'm in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Mike, you could probably speak to that. Um, no, she actually does. She'll come on and be like, oh, I just found like this person on Facebook and found where they supposedly trip on the street view and all this stuff. And I'm like, a couple weeks before, I was like, why don't you do such fun? And I guess I went over it. I had sessions in the industry for the same time, so I just want to see you guys. Uh, <laughs> I can only make this one announcement uh, kind of promotion. Uh, there is another session today at 3 o'clock on recruitment and job search. <laughs> yeah, so if anyone's from the, you know, the business side wants to learn how a business can use these things for recruiting. Um, and they also will get a fresh amount of information about job search and how to work together. The recruitment strategies. Group C. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Okay. <coughs> yes. How would you refer to the fact that some of the corporation asking for the social skills and number? Uh, and I mean, there's an issue of the ethical issue, the security issue. What do they need my number for? Uh, you mean like online, like during the application online, process? Yes. Um. I mean, I guess it depends on the situation. Um. For example, when we um, at UPMC, if we run a, if we need to run a background check on someone, we need to have a social security number. Um, but you know, those things stay private and confidential. You know, we don't leave the forms laying around everywhere. Um, I mean, someone asking for it on an online application.
education. I don't know if that's really appropriate, but then again, some people do it too, to, um, you know, like, I guess kind of make sure you're a real person. Um, you know, sometimes, um, when I was working in third party staffing, um, sometimes an employer would require us to give them the last four per last four digits of the candidate's social security number when we submitted them because of the fact that um, a lot of, not a lot of, I won't say a lot of, some third party recruiters are sneaky and were submitting candidates who they didn't get their approval from. So I may find someone's resume and say, okay, this guy's awesome, but I'm not gonna call him first. I'm just gonna submit his resume and see if they're interested. And then I'll call him later and see if he's even interested in this job. So I know that that was one thing that some companies were asking you know, the third party recruiters to do just to almost legitimize the fact that, okay, I talked to this person, you know, even if they made up the last four digits. I mean, I guess anyone can make them up. But, um, you know, just, just kind of that fact that, um, you know, trying to prove that you actually talked to someone. Um, are there specific companies that have done that that you've noticed? Or? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know what the purpose of that would be, you know, up front. Um, it's kind of different when you actually start the job or if you're, you know, if they want to run a background check on you. But, um, I mean, if there would be a way to get around that and not put the numbers in, yeah, I think it would just depend on your preference. Um, I think Missy yesterday was saying that we're putting your social security number anywhere online. So that might be a good, a good rule to follow. So if anyone has any questions and you want to follow up with me later, um, feel free to use any of these you know, contact methods that I'd be working on to follow up with you and ask and answer any questions you have.